Malone is the friendliest, kindest person I've ever met. It's almost like somebody you went to high school with or like a friendly neighbor. Like he's just very warm and welcoming. All right, so uh, yeah, hi, thanks for thanks for being here today. Uh, so let's just get started by asking like, how did you get started in the industry? How did you become the Eagle Av? Is it Av or Eve? No, it's Av, it's Av. Av. Okay. Like just, it's actually just like my last name cut off a little bit. Yeah. So I, uh, how I started in the music business was actually uh, me interning. I started interning at a, at a music studio and uh, I ended up becoming a uh, assistant engineer for uh, a writer producer named Rico Love. So working with him for a few years, I ended up uh, having him record on some of my beats. Eventually I signed with him and then everything kind of just went amazing after that. You know, I just kept getting new, new placements and move. I ended up moving to LA and yeah, I, LA is definitely uh, where I got a lot of more placements as well. So it was really just from interning, starting from the uh, beginning. So your first producer was Rico Love? Well, he's, uh, he's the first person that kind of put me on as a producer. Oh. He's a writer producer as well, but he kind of took me under his wing and, and helped me start my career. Mm, that's great. So what would you say is the, the uh, long term key to being a, a successful producer? I would say the, the way to have longevity in this business is one, collabing with other people, collabing with writers, collabing with uh, different producers you know, taking, not stealing their ideas, but you know, you kind of <laughs> learn their ways and how they do things and applying those same techniques in, in your own manner, in your own way. And also uh, being open-minded, you know, cause music is constantly changing, uh, uh, especially with the sounds and the, the type of different sounds they use. You want to try to keep a young ear and just keep, you know, working with these new young producers as well and kind of seeing what the new wave is, you know? Definitely, yeah. Hey, speaking of uh, collaborations, so you recently just worked with uh, KSI on his on his new album, um, All Over the Place, right? So I see that you that you're credited with working with Twenty One Savage and Future on some of the songs. So can you tell us about that? How, what was it like working with him and all these other artists that you're working with? Sure. Yeah. So it started me being on tour with uh, Rico Love and Future. This was about six years ago. Uh, on that tour, Future recorded to one of my beats, and uh, I actually engineered it as well. But um, I had that I had that record for a while, so I played it for my manager, Mams Taylor, and he was like, "Yo, this would be a dope idea to give to to KSI for his project." I was like, "Okay, let's do it." I just wanted to reproduce it a little bit, make it uh, more modern because it was a little bit older. So I had me and my buddy Bankro got it uh, work on beat, and we ended up uh, giving it to him. He recorded it, he loved it, and the last step was bringing Twenty One Savage on uh, on that third verse. So it was a process. It took a while to get the record to happen, but it's finally out, so I'm excited about it. Yeah, I, I listened to it a couple of minutes ago. It's really good. So it's no secret that you've worked with a lot of celebrities. So what would you say is your uh, favorite or most, most memorable story with some of them? I mean, I, I have worked with a lot of different artists, but for like my personal accomplishment and like my, my personal favorite session, I'd have to say was Will Smith. I know it sounds wild, but it's just because he's like an icon for me. I grew up watching his, he's, that's the Fresh Prince, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's, that's dope. So he came in, he wanted, uh, he wanted to work on some music, you know, maybe he was bored, I don't know, but he just wanted to work on some music. And uh, he came in, we did records for him. This was uh, with Rico Love at that time. Uh, we did a bunch of records for him. And, you know, he I don't even think he recorded anything. He just wanted to be in the studio, but just having him there and his energy, his vibe was great. It was, it was a great session. Wow, that sounds amazing. So do you, do you have any industry secrets that you want to spill to those starting to, you know, rise up? Like, would you recommend your website? Because I know um, you have one. Yeah, I would say follow my YouTube, first of all, because I, I try to give, you know, tips to up and coming producers and, and ways to try to try to make sure you uh, solidify those placements. That's the that's the key is to get these placements, have people keep your records. That's the whole thing, because it's one thing to get album cuts and, and artists cutting on your beats. But for them to want to keep it and put it on their project, that's a whole different story. So, um, yeah, one of my big uh, things I would always say on my YouTube would be to always be prepared in your session. So if you know you have a session with a big artist coming up the next day, just, you know, load up on loops, load up on samples, get everything you want prepared. So when you come to the session, you don't look like you're all over the place. You just have everything organized. You already, you're already, it's like you're preparing for war, you know, and you want to win that battle. You want to make sure you get that placement. Yeah, definitely. Hey, speaking of that YouTube, um, I, I noticed that you give a lot of tips and tricks out to other people, or like people who are, who are starting up. Uh, why would you do this in, in, in the way that I know you have a hectic schedule and you work with a lot of producers, Like, so like, why take the time out of your day to um, make this content? 
I feel like you have to, as someone who's, you know, been through it all and I've seen a lot of things, I feel like it's it's almost a law for someone who has had success in the music business to give back to the people who are trying to make it. Cause it's not an easy business. It takes a lot of time and hard work. And, you know, I've been lucky enough to, to get where I am. So I feel like I have to give back to them. I, can, I don't always post on my YouTube, but when I do, I, you know, it's when I, I find something that really inspires me, like, oh, this is a good idea. I should share this with the youth and let them, you know, absorb it and apply it to their lives. Definitely, yeah. So I see they worked on Post, uh, Post Malone's um, Zach and Codeine uh, for beer bottles and Bentleys. So what was that like? Um, is, 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 is like, he's a chill guy? Is he demanding? What's, what's yeah, that oh, like? Post Malone is the friendliest, kindest person I've ever met. It's almost like somebody you went to high school with or like a friendly neighbor. Like he's just very warm and welcoming, you know, very humble. Um, he has a real unique way of working too. Like he'll go into the booth, he'll record a bunch of melodies with no words, just different mumbles. And then his uh, engineer slash producer, uh, Louis Bell, he would arrange everything with him and uh, make it a full record without words. And then wow. he would put the words in after. He would like write write it down and figure out what the song is gonna be called in the words. And then he will re-record it with the actual words in. So it's a really dope process. So it was amazing working with him. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Cause I would've thought that he puts in the mumbles and all that stuff afterwards, not before. So yeah, yeah so that's great. So to end it off kind of, um, what's next for you? I, I know that you, you're working with a lot of um, a lot of big artists out there. So what's next for Diego App? For me, what's next is not just trying to work on one single or one record for someone's project, but actually taking an artist and building a whole project with them together. Like I want to executive produce albums. Um, I've done already one. I'm working on a few other ones now and um, also signing producers. I want to I want to really build a team around me, and, you know, start working my way towards being an exec in this industry. Oh, sounds great. Well, uh, that's all the questions that we have for you today. So, um, yeah, thanks for coming on. And I um, oh, sorry, I cut you off. <laughs> oh no, I said I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye.